Hello, time for a new video. <clears throat> I know it's been too long, sorry. <laughs> um, and really, I want to just keep going, but um, I, I have to make a video for it. Show you where I'm at, it's pretty cool. Um, now again, <laughs> I, I'm going to talk about what I'm what I see with the uh, cores, the coils. This is uh, my 18-ish gauge wire. Um, I still have the other coil sets and wire and I'm going to be winding coils. Uh, but I have to say that I'm going to be ordering another spool. <laughs> this is 22 gauge and now I'm thinking I want something like 19 gauge. So I'm going to get another one. It might take a week but that's what I'm planning on doing. Let me get this started and uh, I can yap while it's cranking up. So we'll let it speed up uh, just quickly. Here's what's going on. The coils are wound in opposite directions. Uh, but the start winding of one is opposite the other. They're connected together and I'm taking tapping the other two and that's an AC current going through a full wave bridge rectifier turning it into a DC current uh, I have a voltmeter across the cap I have a capacitor here that is 6700 microfarads so it's you know pretty thick it's nice um, so that the voltage is closer to being uh, what's coming out of the coil I have the ammeter on here now I'm gonna to start with I'm gonna have the ammeter across the motor it's gonna be the path of least resistance and we're gonna see what the uh, current is and then I'm gonna take it off and put it like this arrangement and we'll see the current going through the motor and we'll see the wheel fly and we'll check out the RPMs uh, da -da -da. There's the input to this motor. Still have the same resistors in line with it. Um, so it has the same top end, which is 445 RPM without anything next to the wheel. Right? <clears throat> so now we're up to 15.5 volts DC. Still climbing a bit. We'll check the RPMs right. 418 RPM so I'm gonna flip the switch and the current is not going to go through the motor yet it's going to go through the ammeter and we're going to have a look and so we have basically a quarter of an amp, uh, 270 milliamps, 0.27 amps. But the wheel slows slightly. We'll let it settle where it wants to. It's not slowing a whole lot. that engaged just showing you where I'm at now also uh, as we let it settle to where it wants to be through the ammeter um, I want to say I, I stopped so I can make a video I've given this the TLC that it needed desperately uh, leveled it out and, and got it in much better shape um, now I'm going to be adding more coil sets. I have to make some more cores. Um, I'm going to be adding more coil sets. Next vid probably will be testing with the coils on this wheel. Not too sure. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to be uh, finally guys adding more coil sets. And I know I've been slow about it but I've learned a lot and going to share with some of it with you right now. So the voltage across the cap is at zero. It's all current, 0.27 amps. 
going through the ammeter and it has slowed to 403 RPM. That's just how I just tested it just now as well. So that's good. So it slowed down about 15 RPM but it's giving a good current at a good voltage. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the switch off. Right. So now there's no current going through the ammeter. We're showing our voltage again. And, and that's the cap building up a little bit at the top end. Right. That's why it's just taking a second. So I'm going to switch on to here. Now the ammeter is in series with the motor and so the current's going to go through the ammeter, through the motor, we'll see the motor run and we'll check out the meters and we'll check out the RPMs of both systems. So let's just see what's going on here. It should have accelerated a touch again, yep. So 418, right? So now we're going to engage the switch. This is hard to do. Uh, the motor will start to turn. We'll look at everything. Here we go. And it starts on its own again, which is very good because now it's twice as heavy, or, or thereabouts, because I've added the other magnets. Now we have almost all that current going through there. And a good portion of the uh, volts, the voltage has dropped, right, the voltage dropped. That's speeding up. Our wheel here has slowed. And it's slowing, slowing at a pretty good pace, right? So we're at 380 right now, and it's, it was still dropping. We'll look at this wheel, 420, 423, 426, 432, that's going to speed up. So we're over 430 right now on this wheel, RPM wise, but we've slowed this one, right? Now we're at 370, 371, and that's where it's going to be. Oop, dang it. That's where it's going to want to stay at, uh, 370, 371. So it has slowed down considerably, right? But we're getting a really good output. We've got 0.18 amps going through now. And now we're over 500 RPM. Again, I'm shooting for about 1,000, 1,200 is what I want. Now, the wheel has slowed to around 370. Right. So now what I'm going to do is, but we're getting a good result here. And again, we're not pulling all of it through, so we're not getting a full effect, right? So what I'm going to do is use this back. You can see the input dropping a bit, right? We've come back on the core touch. Theoretically, this should slow down a touch. And it is. We're going to see where that goes. And theoretically, this should have sped up. And it is. So we're at 380. It's very much a balancing act between the strength of the magnet, your size of the core, its uh, dimensions and makeup to begin with of the core your coils on the core, the position, and how much output you use. If you don't use the output entirely, you're not going to get a good effect on the wheel. 
and it's a bit of a battle to try and do it this way, I gotta say, uh, because this load here, this little motor, is very much not um, what this system wants to do. So I'm kind of forcing, I'm forcing things here is, is basically what I'm doing. <laughs> and yes, I was the kid who forced the round peg through the square hole when I was younger. I actually did in uh, preschool. <laughs> I ground the wooden peg on the cement floor until it went through. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we've got it still have a good RPM here, a good speed on this little wheel, right? We're near 450. This, this wheel has recovered to 380-ish. And by the way, the input to this motor really hasn't been affected a whole lot. I'm doing that, but we're sending a good current through this wheel and um, getting a good result here, even though I'm forcing the situation. But, uh, and we talked about before about the homopolar motor driving aspect, and that's, it's a dead short, and that would be best, but I'm, I'm going to add coils to this and uh, shoot for my goal. At the very, very, very least, <laughs> I'm going to have a super efficient system, but I think everyone sees where I'm going. I've calmed down in calling this or my, <laughs> my speculations, but I still think the same way. I still think I'm going to do what I originally said, and things are looking really good. This thing's flying, actually, at a good pace. And this, I could arrange this so that things happen better with less impact on the wheel. I just had this same result going on and the wheel was at 405 RPM. And right now it's sticking around 382. But there you go. Wanted to keep you guys updated. I wanted to make a vid um, to show where I'm at. But I'm continuing on the rest of the day and tonight, and I'm going to add coils, more coils to it. And um, you may just see this wheel in the next video. Not saying that it's going to be running itself or anything, but see how it goes. But um, plugging right along here, guys. Oh, and one final thing um, for some understanding in what's going on in these coils and the core and how um, the attraction of the magnets to the core is reduced, perhaps reasons why I'm learning, reading, I read every day. Uh, first of all, a good fella to look into is uh, Richard Feynman. He's a great physicist um, and very cutting edge ideas. Now if you want to read along with basically the info I'm into, now this Ar aronov bohm effect, I was aware of that before I even tried this the first time a couple months ago, but I'm still learning about it and still reading about it, but wanted to share that with you guys. aronov bohm effect, you can look it up, even a wiki has a description on there, as well as the Mossbauer effect. This is sort of an associated effect, and um, you can find some good reading about that. Uh, to, to to get an understanding of what's happening and how this the two opposite windings are behaving with one another with one another and what's happening and there's actually an A field created around the coils which is an electrostatic field that's what the aronoff bohm effect talks about but anyways there you go um, not much else to say, I guess, except that I'm going to be adding more coils now. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, thanks for being patient. Uh, hello to everybody out there. And um, another vid, maybe even tonight. But I'll uh, talk to you later. Thanks.